grace to you and peace and welcome to this online service of worship. My name is Erin Bowers and I am the associate pastor here at First Presbyterian Church in High Point, North Carolina. We are so glad that you have chosen to worship with us today through this video format on the Sunday that is designated as Trinity Sunday in the life of the church. Here at First Presbyterian Church, this is also the Sunday when we honor graduates, those who have graduated from high school and college, and also those who have earned advanced degrees. And so we begin our service today by recognizing them. Let us worship God. worship this morning comes from Psalm 8. O Lord, our Sovereign, how majestic is thy name in all the earth! When I look at our heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them? Mortals that you care for them, Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is thy name in all the earth. Let us pray. O God, we honor this day the majesty and mystery of your name. You are both infinite and intimate, known and unknowable, transcendent and transparent. In love you have made us your own and invite us to join in your life. We are restless until we find our rest in you. Blessed Trinity, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
pray together, confessing our sin before God. Where do we begin, Lord God? We survey our world and see the inequity and violence, the death of innocence and the exploitation of the vulnerable. We would like to say that we do not participate in such blatant brutality, but when we do not work for justice, stand with the oppressed and speak truth to power, we perpetuate the very things you hate the most. Your prophets tell us plainly that our worship offends you when it is not accompanied by our care for the least among us. We need your help, Almighty God. We cannot right the wrongs of our world or cleanse the sin within our souls without your intervention. We come to you now, humbled, contrite, begging for your mercy, longing for your transformation. Amen. Hear the good news. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. I declare to you then in the name of Jesus Christ, your sin, my sin, all of our sin together is forgiven. May the God of mercy who forgives us all our sins strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep us in eternal life. Amen. Today's scripture is from 2 Corinthians, chapter 13, 11 through 13. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today is Trinity Sunday, the day we celebrate and consider God's being as triune, one God in three persons. Our text from 2 Corinthians is one of only a handful of places in Scripture where we have something like a clear articulation of the Trinitarian nature of God. It's a doctrine that it took a little while for the church to develop in full, though it is gleaned from Scripture in a variety of different ways. There are a lot of different things we can say when we talk about the Trinity what it means to say that God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that God is one, but that God also has three distinct roles. And one of the things that we can say about the triune God is that it is a distinctively Christian understanding of who God is. Understanding that it is not only the creator of the world, but also God in Jesus Christ, who is God, and God the Holy Spirit, who is God, 
is peculiar to Christianity. This understanding of who God is also tells us something about God's desire for relationship. That before God was ever in relationship with each one of us, before God was ever in relationship with humanity, God was already in relationship in God's own self. That God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit exist together in an eternal relationship, an eternal community, as closely bound together as possible. One God in three persons. God in a relationship of love. God in community. The passage we heard today comes from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. It is the very end of the letter and the last words Paul writes to the Corinthian church before he anticipates coming to see them. Paul has been pastoring this church from afar, a church that has had its fair share of disagreements and troubles, not that different from a lot of churches. I could identify with Paul here in the sense of trying to pastor a church from afar. There are so many things that I have said to you over the past few weeks that I would rather have said in person, including what I am going to say today. Zoom meetings are nice, but they aren't good enough. Email and texts can be tricky. I am thankful that we have the technology that we are using today to substitute for our in-person worship, but this is still not the same. I feel strange preaching to a camera. Despite all the efforts we are making to be together, I still feel like I am pastoring you from afar though perhaps not as far away as Paul was from the Corinthian church. And he did it without all the technology that we have available to us, which is a good reminder that it is possible. It just requires a little more attention on all of our parts. So Paul writes to the church in Corinth, a church with its fair share of brokenness. And after exhortations and threats of discipline and convincing arguments, Paul winds up here with these concluding statements. He charges the church to listen to what he said and to put things right, to find mutual agreement and to live at peace. And then he ends with this well-known Trinitarian benediction. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. This benediction tells us who God is. God in three persons. Human beings who are created in the image of God are most human when they are in relationship with other human beings. Because God in God's self is in relationship. This is one of the things that we celebrate on Trinity Sunday. A God who is three in one is a God who exists in a relationship of love, even in God's self. And then that relationship of love pours out into all creation and specifically into God's relationship with humanity. God is God in relationship to be created 
in the image of God means to be created as those who are designed to be in relationship. We are made to be in relationship to the God who loves us, and we are made to be in relationship to one another. Now, it must be said as we talk about our creation in the image of God that this is not intended as some song of praise to the triumph of the human spirit. We are not perfect beings. I think we all know that. The image of God in each of us is deeply affected by sin, but even despite our sin, the image of God in us is not unrecognizable. We can recognize the image of God in those around us so that we can live out the image of God in us to be relational human beings relating to other human beings who also bear the image of God. We do that as we live together in community. We celebrate that unity like we did last week on Pentecost, the shared unity of the body of Christ. Easy enough. Or is it? It doesn't seem so easy right now. Unless we are completely obtuse, if we look around at the state of our world, we will realize that we have a problem. In our reading today, Paul asked the Corinthians to pursue order, mutual understanding, and peace. And as we've mentioned, he follows that up with a Trinitarian reflection. I don't think it's a mistake that he holds these things together. Paul was issuing this as a charge and a benediction to the people of Corinth in all their contentiousness and controversy. And just as there was brokenness in the Corinthian community, there is brokenness in our communities. Racism, which is nothing new, which has existed since the founding of our country, has once again been brought to our attention as a nation. And we are forced to face the fact that things are out of order, that we don't have mutual understanding, that we are not at peace. When we are confronted with these issues, issues that for so many of us, we can easily ignore in our day-to-day -day living, but when they are thrust upon us by the world around us, you and I have some choices to make. And I am going to tell you today what I recommend. You and I can choose to listen. And when I mention listening, I mean that really good listening, not the kind where you listen just enough so that you can formulate your own response. Listening so that you hear what someone else is saying. Listening to the experiences of others. The kind of listening that increases understanding, that helps put things right, that leads to peace.
particularly if you are white. Listening is the better course of action right now. You and I can choose to examine ourselves. We didn't read the whole chapter today, but Paul himself reminds us of this just a few verses earlier in chapter 13. Examine yourselves to see whether you are living in the faith. Test yourselves, Paul says. I was also reminded this week of a quote from the Soviet political prisoner, Alexander Solzhenitsyn, who, when writing of his experience in the Soviet prison, wrote, if only there were evil people somewhere insidiously committing evil deeds, and it were necessary only to separate them from the rest of us and destroy them. But the line Dividing good and evil cuts through the heart of every person. That is worth remembering as we examine ourselves. And so we might ask ourselves, what are we doing to increase mutual understanding? What are we doing to put things right? What are we doing? to further the cause of peace. Examining ourselves is a better course of action right now than making judgments about anyone else. You and I can choose to think hard. And here's what I mean by that. For example, it is easy thinking to simply jump quickly to condemn rioting and looting. That is an easy move. Looting is wrong because it is a crime and it isn't difficult to see how it hurts people. It isn't hard to condemn a crime. But we can think harder than that. It takes more discipline of thought, more rigorous thought to condemn systemic issues. Because when we talk about systemic sin and systemic racism, we are talking about the places where evil is happening to people within the law and sometimes supported by the law. This is a lot harder to think about. Disciplining ourselves to think hard is a better course of action right now. You and I can choose just to try to do better. This is what I am thinking about every day right now. How can I do better? Doing better is always a better course of action than staying the same or, God forbid, doing worse. You and I can choose to be curious. If we don't understand something, we can try to learn about it. If we don't understand someone else's experience, we can wonder about it or read about it rather than try to critique it. Being curious is a better course of action right now than making judgments. Finally, you and I can choose to love. We cannot live in the image of the triune God if we are separated 
from one another. There is no separation in God who is one, yet distinct in three persons. Likewise, it is not possible for one part of the body of Christ to be in pain and for the rest of the body to ignore it. This is true because we all belong to the same body. Even more so, it is true because we all belong to Christ. Of course, the image of God in us is marred by sin. But you and I aren't asked to value one another according to our sin. Thanks be to God. We value people because of the image of God in each one of us. When we are not in relationship with one another, we are not, not living out the image of God in us the way it was meant to be lived. The God who lives in relationship calls us to life in relationship. The good news, though, is that even if we are not getting this right, our relationship with God does not depend on it. God loves us anyway. God loves us no matter what. Just like God loves everyone who has been created in God's image. Every single one. Thanks be to the triune God in whose image we are created. May God grant us the grace to recognize that image in ourselves, in those around us, and in all people. Amen.
Let us pray. Creator God, you made all that is seen and unseen and called every last bit of it good. We look at the birds of the air and the beasts of the field and see your glorious work. We see the lilies of the field in their splendor and marvel at your gratuitous beauty. The diversity and intricacy of creation astounds and awes us. You made us stewards of your marvelous work, and yet far too often we have failed to treat the earth with care and reverence. Forgive us for using that which you gifted us to enjoy. As you make of us new creations, move us to see ourselves not as consumers of the world's resources, but as those who tend and nurture the earth's gifts. Lord Jesus Christ, you came not to condemn, but to save. You shone light in the darkness and flooded the cosmos with grace and truth. You fed the hungry, healed the sick, sought out the lost and ate with sinners. No one was beyond your concern. You regarded the unseen, touched those long marginalized, and had compassion even for those who could not bring themselves to leave what they knew in order to follow you. Your mercy stuns us. Your love astounds us. Your command to love others renders us wholly dependent on your power to work within us. In a season filled with fear and overrun with death, we plead for your intervention. Grant us your peace that passes understanding and then enable us to be the peacemakers we are to be in our families, communities, and country. As your body in this world Help us to be ambassadors of reconciliation and stewards of your mysteries in the places most in need of your compassion and justice. Holy Spirit, when you possess us, we cannot help but be in relationship with the whole swath of humanity. When your wind blows, we are swept up in God's salvation plan to bring unity, wholeness, and abundant life to each and every corner of creation. 
When your flames burn, we see with clarity our complicity with sinful systems and our personal participation in inflicting pain on others. May your refining fire burn away all that prevents us from fully following Jesus Christ and illumine the way we are to go. Enliven our discipleship and send us out to preach, teach, and baptize, feed, tend, and heal. Advocate for the least, seek out the lost, and stand with the oppressed until death and pain and crying are no more. We make our prayer in the name of the triune God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And using the words our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen.